So we're going to continue now looking at two population proportions. And as I mentioned before, we could be looking at a situation where we are asking, do we have a higher proportion of uh, students in commerce graduating with distinctions compared to uh, the proportion of students graduating with distinctions from, say, the Faculty of Science or the Faculty of Arts? Um, so we could form a confidence interval or we could form, we could do a hypothesis test just like we did with the difference between two population means. Now we need some assumptions. Um, one of course is always that the samples that we select are randomly chosen, but also we need to assume that the expected value, in other words, n1 times pi 1 is greater than 5. That means the whatever the true population proportion is multiplied by the sample size, we should have an expected number of five people, right? Um, or five um, observations that, um, that um, in other words, we can't take samples so small that the expected value of the number of responses um, would, um, favorable responses would be less than five. And so this little test must be satisfied. And 1 times pi 1 must be greater than 5. And, one, and 2 times pi 2 must be greater than 5. And then, of course, and 1 into 1 minus pi 1 must be greater than 5. And then 2 into 1 minus pi 2 must be greater than 5 as well. The point estimate is what we observe in the sample. So in sample 1, we'll observe um, proportion 1. In sample 2, we'll observe proportion 2, sample proportion 2. So the difference between those two would be our point estimate of pi 1 minus pi 2. And so, again, using the generic form of a confidence interval, what's a confidence interval? It is essentially the point estimate, which is this value, plus or minus the critical value, and times the standard error. So this formula under the square root, this, this square root part is really the standard error of the estimate, right? Uh, what is the estimate? P1 minus P2. So it's the standard error of uh, P1 minus P2. The same way we have the standard error of X bar 1 minus X bar 2. Right? That's the first thing. In terms of our hypothesis testing, we have two situations that we contend with. The first one is when we assume in the null hypothesis that when there's a zero in the null hypothesis, that is, we'll assume that pi 1 is equal to pi 2. So in this, in this case here, we're saying pi 1 minus pi 2 is greater than or equal to zero. Pi 1 minus pi 2 is less than zero. But when we actually do the test, we will set pi 1 minus pi 2 to zero. So when we set pi 1 minus pi 2 to zero, and then we try to find evidence that pi 1 minus pi 2 is less than 0. We are essentially saying those two things are the same. Pi 1 minus pi 2 is 0 means that the two th values are the same. That 5 minus 5 is 0, 6 minus 6 is 0. So pi 1 minus pi 2 would have to be equal for the difference to be 0. And this is the true in each of these three cases. Here, same thing, when we set it equal to zero, it means that the two proportions are the same. But when we get sample estimates of those proportions, P1 and P2, they're usually not the same. So we have to pool them to get an estimate of a single value, very much like the pooled sample standard deviation. And this is how we do it. Now you recall that uh, a sample proportion is to count up uh, the number of observations in a sample divided by the sample size. So X1 would represent the number of favorable observations from sample 1 divided by n1, and so on. And x2, the number of favorable uh, observations in sample 2 divided by n2. But if we pool them together, that would then be the total number of favorable observations. So for example, if we go back to the case where we talk about distinctions, let this be the x1 represent the number of distinctions in the faculty of, um, of commerce, sorry, or the school, Sobe School of Business and x2 represent the proportion of distinctions in the, not a proportion, but a number of distinctions in the faculty of science. 
So if we combine them, we will have a total number of distinctions over a total sample size. And that gives us a single point estimate, P bar, which would be a pool estimate of the overall proportion. All right? And that's how we do it. Our test statistic will look like this. Now we could take this value and put it on the inside, which is what our formula sheet, I think, looks like. But uh, let me just show you so that you don't get confused with that you realize that it is very much the same thing. Go select all and clear and go back to my click. So we're looking at when we um, rewrite that formula Z is equal to P1 minus P2 minus pi 1 minus pi 2. So instead of writing the P bar 1 minus P bar on the outside, we could write it on the inside. P bar 1 minus P bar over N2. So we could write it like this. It's the same thing. Because, you know, this denominator is the same as saying P bar 1 into P bar 1 minus P bar uh, 1 over N2. All right. So if we pull that on the outside, uh, we could kind of factor it this way, all right? It's pretty much the same thing. It's like taking this and multiplying the numerator uh, for this one and taking the same thing and multiplying this numerator. And we'll have what we have over on this side. The two things are equivalent in the denominator, all right? So that's the case when we consider that there's no difference between the two population proportions. But what if we consider that there's a difference between them? In other words, our hypothesis would look like this. HO, sorry, this might be called pi 1 minus pi 2 is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to some value V, but V is not 0. But if I put 0 here, it's just like what we had before. So V is not 0. So for example, I could, I could have HO pi 1 minus pi 2 is equal to 0.02. That means I'm hypothesizing the difference between those two is 2%. So it could be 88 and 90%, 95 and 97%, 50 and 52%, you know, like that. So in a case like this, because this is not 0, those two proportions are not the same. So what's our best estimate of them? P1, our best estimate is P2. And so in a case like that, we will simply say Z is equal to P1 minus P2 minus pi 1 minus pi 2. And instead of pooling them like we did before, it would now be P1, 1 minus P1 over N1 plus P2, 1 minus P2 over N2. Okay? So now this looks kind of a little more traditional um, compared to the first case right here. So I think if we if we understand that, and this is for the special case where the difference is non-zero. Now when we are putting in the value here, this is this gets its value from HO. So in this case, this would really be 0 0.02, all right. And in this case right here, this also gets its value from HO. 
but then in this case the difference is zero so we could actually just drop this out of the formula if we wanted to okay let's go back and see where we are with this now the notes here does not actually show the second case that I just did and it just only discusses the case where the difference between the proportion is zero see zero here zero and zero okay and then we have an example in our text that we can, I mean here that we could follow but as you could see then we could by looking at the test statistic uh, the, that we're dealing with the case when there's a zero in the null hypothesis all right? and that should bring us to the end of the discussion so just so recapping very quickly we talked about the difference between proportions and the difference between means which was uh, done a bit earlier uh, the difference between proportions um, we will consider we have some assumptions that uh, we have to make sure that the sample size multiplied by the proportions uh, whether or not is uh, the actual sample proportion of one minus that proportion must exceed five what it does it allows us to meet the criteria for estimating the binomial distribution with a normal distribution and that's why we could afford to use z because really this problem is about a binomial uh, distribution but we are using a normal approximation to the binomial okay and it seems to to work fine um, in the case we have two cases one where the difference between the means that's when we're talking about the hypothesis testing um, problem then when there is a zero in our hypothesis we use one formula which is this formula right here and then when there is a non-zero value in a null hypothesis representing the difference between the two proportions then we use a slightly different formula I showed you earlier okay and of course if we need to calculate the confidence intervals for the difference between proportions we simply do that with the same basic formula point estimate plus or minus critical value times the standard error and remember when you're interpreting the, for the confidence interval for differences if the interval contains a zero that means we have insufficient evidence that one proportion is better than the other or bigger than the other, smaller than the other because in that interval it's possible for them to be the same however if both limits of the interval are on either side are negative or positive then you do have it, ample evidence or sufficient evidence sorry, that there is a difference between those two population parameters those two proportions okay so hopefully this helps uh, with just in terms of just a brief review but um, I would strongly encourage that you take some questions out of the textbook and then attempt to apply it using the models that we discussed today.